people pleaser is a person who has an emotional need to please others, often at the expense of his or her own needs or desires. Is it worth it to sacrifice your needs to make others happy? If you struggle with difficulty saying no, avoiding conflict, feeling anxious when others are mad at you, and you are ready to stop being a people pleaser, then this episode is perfect for you. Welcome to Calmly Coping. I'm your host, Tati Garcia. I'm a licensed therapist and a high-functioning anxiety coach. Calmly Coping is the podcast for people who struggle with anxiety and high-functioning anxiety. Each Wednesday, you'll hear informative episodes with actionable tips about decreasing anxiety, adopting a healthy mindset, and managing your time and energy so you can live a calm and balanced life. Let's get started. This is episode number 44, Stop People Pleasing and Start Speaking Up for Yourself. Welcome back and welcome if you're a first-time listener. Thank you so much for tuning in. So what does it mean to be a people pleaser? A people pleaser is a person who has an emotional need to please others, often at the expense of his or her own needs or desires. Being a people pleaser isn't all bad. It shows that you're a caring person who values social connections and enjoys making others happy. Unquote. And this is from Webster's Dictionary. So, yes, being a people pleaser can mean that you're a caring person, and that's great. But sometimes it goes past the level of caring for others more than you care for yourself. And this is when it goes into the territory where you're denying your own needs in favor of making others happy. So, what does it look like when you're a people pleaser? This can look like difficulty saying no feeling anxious when others are mad at you, avoiding conflict at all costs, saying yes even when you don't want to just to go with the flow. Maybe it's also agreeing with others out of fear, saying sorry all the time for small things and especially when you didn't do anything wrong. So yes, this is you if you apologize when somebody else bumps into you. Keeping plans out of obligation and not desire or guilt when disagreeing or saying no. And these are just a few examples. And the consequences of people-pleasing can be that you are communicating the message that other people's needs are more important than your own. And you're also sacrificing your own needs in order to keep other people happy. As a result, you might start to grow resentful and frustrated, and your needs may not be respected by others as a consequence. So I think it's important to start off this conversation by talking about the three styles of communication. So there are three styles of communication, and this is something that I often will share with my clients. So on one end of the scale is passive communication. And so passive communication is when you think your needs don't matter at all. This is when you give in and you're not talking and feeling like you're not being heard. You may try to keep the peace in a place of passive communication, and you may also allow yourself to be bullied. You might not be saying what you think or not saying anything at all. And this can make other people respect you less and can damage your self-esteem. So if we look at the other end of the scale, the complete opposite end is aggressive communication. So when you're communicating aggressively, this is thinking that only your needs matter. You're taking from others. You might be talking over people and looking out only for yourself. This could involve bullying others. It can lead to shouting, aggression, or violence. And this can also damage relationships because other people often don't like aggression. And it can damage other people's self-esteem. And then if we look at the middle in that, of that scale, so in between passive and aggressive communication, there is assertive communication. So this is recognizing that your needs matter as much as anyone else's. You may be more willing to compromise. You're both talking and listening. You're making sure that things are fair for you and others, as well as standing up for yourself. And you're expressing your point clearly and confidently. And an assertive communication often enhances relationships because other people know what they're, where they stand and it builds your self-esteem. So from this explanation, I'm sure you can probably guess where you may be now as a people pleaser. So oftentimes people pleasers are in that passive end of the scale. So thinking that your needs don't matter and allowing yourself to be bullied and not being heard. You know, the goal, I think, is to focus on assertive communication. 
Because assertive communication is when you're clearly and calmly expressing with what you want without being too passive where your needs aren't being met or without being too aggressive where you're not respecting the needs of others. And when you com- communicate assertively, it's not a guarantee that your needs are going to be met, but it can make it more likely and it can make it so that people are more likely to listen to you when you're giving them respect and you're also speaking up for yourself so that you're getting your needs met. So ultimately, when you're on the people pleasing end, sometimes people can fear that if you're speaking up for yourself, then this is being selfish and you think that you just need to be going with the flow and not complaining. And you might fear that other people will judge you negatively if you do speak up for your needs. And I just want to dispel the fact that this is a myth. People are not going to look at you as being selfish when you speak up for your needs, especially when they are completely valid and justified. And anytime that you have an opinion about something or you feel like you're not comfortable with something, then your needs are valid and justified. And it's not being selfish to speak up for your needs. And I guess I want to ask this question is, you know, would you look at somebody else as being selfish if they expressed an opinion or if they spoke up for themselves or if they disagreed with you? The answer is probably no. And although not everybody is going to think in that way, the fact is that most people won't necessarily view you as being selfish for speaking up for your needs. And this could be based on a limiting belief and a fear that you hold within yourself. And it's also not either or. It's not either I'm grateful and I'm kind and I'm respectful or I speak up for myself. Because speaking up for yourself is not complaining and it's not being selfish. So you can have both. You can be both grateful, kind, compassionate, and caring and speak up for yourself at the same time. And I think it's that conundrum that people who struggle with people pleasing often get stuck in where they feel as though they cannot be both caring and kind to others and considerate of their needs while speaking up for their own needs at the same time because they fear that there's going to be some conflict or some disagreement and it's going to make them feel anxious or uncomfortable in the situation. So I want you to think about that concept of the and here. You can be kind, you can be respectful, and you can speak up for yourself. Because although this may seem pessimistic, nobody else is going to speak up for your needs other than you, no matter how much support you have. That's because people are often looking out for their own needs. And this is just human nature. And even people who are well-intentioned cannot possibly know how to advocate for you as well as you can advocate for yourself because people can't read your mind. Nobody knows exactly what you need in every moment. And you're the only person who knows that which is why it is so important to speak up for yourself and try to get over that hurdle of fear that you encounter when you get stuck in that place of people pleasing. And, you know, I think sometimes people get stuck in this all or nothing thinking where they think either I need to be completely passive and not speak up for myself, or I need to be completely selfish and complain where there is that middle ground of assertive communication where you can have both. And that's what I want to focus on in the remainder of this episode. But before we get to my tips for how to speak more assertively and how to speak up for yourself, let's take a quick break for the sponsor for this episode. Hey, I wanted to take a quick break to tell you about my free quiz to help you determine if you have high functioning anxiety and how significant it is for you. In this PDF download, I will walk you through a series of simple questions to assess your level of high functioning anxiety. And then you will also score how you land in the four different categories of high functioning anxiety symptoms. Lastly, you will get personalized resources depending on your results. To download this quiz, you can go to calmlycoping.com slash quiz or click on the link in the show notes. Now back to the episode. So here are my tips for how to speak up for yourself. Tip number one is to build up your courage. So the first step to having any difficult conversation is building up your courage first regarding having the conversation. So often what stops most people is the fact that they don't want to bother the other person or they insist on avoiding conflict. And you have to decide what's more important to you, staying stuck or at least getting your point across so that a decision can be made or so that at least you can feel heard. If you're okay continuing to live with things the way that they are and not feeling respected, then keep going. But if you're feeling frustrated or unhappy, then those emotions may start to build up and frustration and resentment may occur if you don't do something about it. 
So think about the worst case scenario if you speak your mind. Will things really be that bad? And will you be able to cope with the aftermath? I'm going to make a guess that you can survive somebody feeling upset or getting mad at you. Because you've probably done it before and it's probably happened. And although it's uncomfortable, you've dealt with it and overcome it. So when it comes to building up your courage, it's important to practice positive self-talk by reinforcing why it's so important for you to advocate for yourself. Because like I said previously, most of the time, nobody else will advocate for you or your needs. So it's time for you to speak up for yourself. My second tip is to choose the right time and place. Now, this isn't always possible because sometimes things come up um, spontaneously. And if this is the case, a great tip can be to give yourself some time. So take some space even if it's just to take a breath before responding and before immediately saying yes. And maybe taking that space means telling the person, I'll get back to you later. Or, you know, just give me five minutes to think about this. Or whatever it is you feel like you need in the moment. Giving yourself that space can prevent you from getting into that impulsivity of just feeling obligated to saying yes and rather reflecting on what's the best choice for you right now. So let's say if you do have that opportunity to choose the time and place, then it may be best, it may not be the best time when, let's say, your supervisor's overwhelmed with a deadline or when your husband just got home after a long day at work. So it's important to choose a time when the other person is going to be more calm and able to focus on what you're saying. And if they're distracted with stress or feeling tired or anything else, it might be difficult for them to give you their full attention. So it can also help to have a conversation in a place where you can be undisturbed. So choose a place where you feel comfortable and where you can feel heard so that you can fully get your point across and advocate for yourself in a place and a time where you feel heard and respected. Tip number three is to start off with kindness and demonstrate the benefits to the other person. So this is an important piece because this is where you're coming to the other person with that compassion and respect towards them. So it can help to begin by being supportive of the other person's opinion and intention. And regardless of what you're talking about, the other person is going to be more receptive to listen if they feel understood and validated. So if your approach is to tell the other person what they're doing wrong, then it doesn't matter who they are, they will become defensive and the conversation will stop from there. So let's say if you're telling the other person that, you know, I completely disagree with what you're saying, I can't believe you would think that. Most people are going to get defensive, and the minute somebody gets defensive, then they stop listening. So it's important to make efforts to not come at the person with accusations. And this isn't to minimize your opinion. It's just to maximize the likelihood that there will be a productive conversation and that the other person is going to be actively listening to you. People will also listen more closely when their interests are being communicated. So this is why it's beneficial to demonstrate how your opinion can be beneficial to the other person or to just let them down lightly. So think about what you want and how you can help them, how how you can help them get there. And when you present your opinion via the means of working as a team, as opposed to working against each other, depending on the situation, then things are more likely to work out. So this may not always apply because if you're just saying no, then you may not be having that intention of working together as a team and that's okay. And it's perfectly okay to say no and not have to justify it. And in this case, you may just say, you know, I really appreciate your invitation or I really appreciate you thinking of me. However, I can't or, you know, I have to say no or whatever it is. So I want to give two examples that I'm going to follow up with in the next tip. So this is just the first part. So this is just the first part where you're starting off with kindness and demonstrating the benefits. Let's say you want to talk to your supervisor because you feel like you're not getting enough feedback or um, support at work. So you might say, start off by saying to your supervisor, I know you want our team to be successful at what we do. And let's say in a personal situation, um, let's say you're getting frustrated because your partner's not washing the dishes. So you might start off by saying, I truly appreciate the things you do to help me at home with the chores, and I know it's important for you to have a clean apartment. Now, these statements may seem counterintuitive when you're trying to tell somebody that you want them to change a behavior, but I promise that it's going to make it more likely that the person on the other end is going to be actively listening to you because they know that you have their interests in mind. So tip number four is then to use I statements to state your opinion. So people can't argue with your opinions and feelings as much as they might try. So when you state your case by saying how you feel, 
then people are more likely to listen and not be on the defensive. An I statement is a phrase in which you state how you feel about a situation or another person's behavior. And the key is to state your opinion first, followed by what's influencing this emotion or opinion. So remember to not blame the other person, but to state your emotion as a byproduct of a specific behavior or situation. So let's go back to our professional situation where you want to get more feedback at work and feel more supportive. So you're starting off by saying, I know you want our team to be successful at what we do. And then let's go on to the I statement afterwards. It's important for me to feel supported as an employee at work to help our team be successful. I sometimes feel disappointed when I don't receive positive feedback after I accomplish a goal I worked hard on. So this is you speaking up for your needs while being respectful towards the other person. So now let's look at the personal example where you feel like your partner isn't washing the dishes. So we started off by saying, I truly appreciate the things you do to help me at home with the chores. And I know it's important for you to have a clean apartment. Now we get into the I statement. I sometimes get frustrated when the dishes aren't done because it interferes with me cooking dinner for the both of us. So you're getting across your needs and your desires while still being respectful. And so these are two great examples of assertive communication. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you cannot protect the other person from feeling bad. So it's important to get your point across while keeping the other person's needs in mind, but also not sacrificing what you want in the process. I'm a big proponent that everything in life is all about balance. And in this case, it's about the balance between your own needs and respecting other needs, but ultimately accepting that you cannot make everybody happy and that's okay. Assertive communication is that middle ground between not communicating your needs and letting people walk all over you and aggressively communicating your needs without ever thinking about the other person. And that brings us to tip number five, which is to listen. So it's important to aim for this middle ground where you feel as though you're communicating your needs, but you're also listening to the other person. The most important part of any conversation is listening. And you can demonstrate your listening by reflecting back what they're saying, making eye contact, and demonstrating compassion. So ultimately, this listening isn't just about listening to the other person, but it's also about listening to yourself. So as much as you're listening to the other person, I also want you to listen to yourself and to listen to what is the best choice for you. So are you making this choice because you feel guilty or because you feel obligated? Or are you making this choice because this is something that you really want to do? So take a break anytime somebody asks you to do something in the future or you feel any of those urges to just go along with things or be a people pleaser and try to challenge that urge and that tendency and see what you can do to speak up for yourself today. So it can be difficult to speak up for yourself, but sometimes it's necessary to make change and improve the condition of relationships or situations. And I know that you can build the skills to have these types of conversations and start speaking up for yourself. And like any skill, it can take practice. I suggest reading the book Crucial Conversations to learn more about in-depth conversation skills to help you with any high stakes, difficult conversation because it's a great read. Your action tip for this episode is going to be something simple. So I want you to just for the next week, each day to focus on reflecting on what is one thing you can do today to advocate for yourself and what is one thing you can do to speak up for yourself and to challenge that tendency that you have towards being a people pleaser and making other people happy before yourself. I want you to focus on the idea that speaking up for yourself is not selfish and you deserve to have your needs met and advocated for just as much as anybody else. So put this into action and let me know how it helps. I'd love to hear your feedback. So you can DM me on Instagram at Tatiana GLPC or email me at Tati at BeCalmWithTati.com and let me know. And if you found this podcast episode informative, then please leave me a review on iTunes, letting me know your thoughts. While you wait for next week's episode, I have other episodes about decreasing anxiety, adopting a healthy mindset, and managing your time and energy. Thanks for tuning in today. And until next time, be calm. Thanks so much for listening. If you like what you heard, please share this episode with a friend and please subscribe and leave me a review on iTunes. Also, remember to check me out online at calmlycoping.com and connect with me on Instagram at Tatiana G L P C. 
All content here is for informational purposes only. This content does not replace the professional judgment of your own mental health provider. Please consult a licensed mental health professional for all individual questions and issues. Till next time, I'm Tati, and this has been Calmly Coping.